Welcome back, everyone, to the April 2020 1v1 tournament for Zero K. We have more matches, this time on a map we have not seen before called Firebreak, and we're going to be starting out with Yuznitsny versus Nyardlok, which is a few newer players, but I like to do newer players around round four of the tournament because that's usually when you're going to get fairly even matches between them. Round four, round five, it's like in that, in that range. I always like to showcase everyone in the tournament if I can. I don't like to just have a few players on stream. I want to have everyone on stream at least once if I can. So that's why we're going with this, because I realize there are some good matches at the top level, but it might be... might be something we see regardless, because, you know, that's how this game works sometimes. So we have the match... It is getting ready to go. We wait. Game. There we go. Is Nitsni going for? Well, looks like Amphbot. Yardlock going for tanks. Wow, we have not seen tanks yet today. That is new. Amphbot. I'm not sure. I totally agree with here because it's. Uh, there are some purely underwater sections, but I don't think you can actually get to those with bots. Check underwater. It can't see because it's not. Well, it looks like it's pro. Uh, my work might be fine. Bots are definitely not a bad idea. I think tanks will have a bit of a problem though. It is reasonably flat. Nah, it's flat enough. See the Kadachi coming in here. It's it's fine. It's a bit slow on the ridges, but it won't be a problem. So, there is a bit of room for Yuznetsuni to get their Amphibots behind here through this little side passage in the back and then attack from behind. Not sure what's going to happen. And now we also see New Kodachi with much more freaking shots. Much less in the way of actually setting things on fire. Oh, admittedly, that's in the water. But still, much less setting things on fire, more just damage. Which admittedly is a bit less unique than Kodachi used to be. But, eh, it's also much easier to work with. Oh, there's a bit of fire. Because, yeah, Kodachi's used to be all afterburn damage. And that, that was interesting in the sense that it worked really well against mexes. It was really annoying in that it was very hard to control. Oh, I guess Nisnitsni's running into some issues. Not sure what's going on there. Oh. He has Nitsni requiring a bathroom break. All right, well, iffy timing. You could have just paused before the game started and decided to go with that, but let's look at the map. It's very flat with some hills. And I don't know if the water really is doing much. Again, we kind of already went over that. Plus two metal extractors all over the place, so no really super important metal extractors, just, you know, metal is good. And overall, fairly steep entries into bases. We're already seeing before Nyarlok having a bit of a hard time trying to get in here, and they managed to get in, but yeah, it was a little bit tricky. Definitely somewhat pretty map, although I feel like the skybox could have been a little more exciting. Anyway, back to the game. So, we are back... And Yardlock is ripping things apart, and Yuznetsny has an empty bladder. Everyone's happy. I mean, Yuznetsny's probably not happy about the fact that their base is being torn to pieces by Kodachi. And may not be happy about the fact that Kodachi has been massively buffed. What are you looking for? Doing the random fire thing apparently is a thing, but... Nyardalog is not playing any cloak anything. I don't understand what the motivation is for random lotus shots. Alright, whatever. I guess just have random lotus shots. I don't get that. Like, friendly fire is a thing, you know. Well, at any rate, Kodachi protecting the rest of Yuznetsuni's base from their errant lotuses. And then destroying the rest of the base, so I guess it's not protecting it for that long. 
But it looks like Nyarlok is going to be able to completely rip apart everything Sinsni has. He's Nitsni, however, going over to the north side of the map, getting a metal extractor, at least for posterity, if nothing else. At this point, the Nitsni is actually not that far behind economically. In Yardlock, they do have more security, but they don't have much more in the way of actual metal. I oh, never mind, no, he's Nitsni was just reclaiming. No, they're... They're having a hard time. They're having a very hard time. Someone in the stream chat could tell me what the heck's going on with that Lotus... Like, why you would have your Lotus do random fire when you're not fighting something with any kind of cloaked units. Considering that, as we just saw there, it friendly fires, which isn't huge, but it's still annoying. It's still a thing. There's no reason for it. Now, well, maybe that was just an automatic behavior that Nesni has set up for when fighting against enemies that have cloaked units, and they just don't turn it off. Curious, and ill-advised, I would say, but sure, why not? Go for it. It's all good. Man, I'm out of there. Some duck scallops coming in here. Ogres coming in to counter that, and... Oh, whoa! Ogres double missiles now. Right. They changed that. Also buffed the torpedoes for Anthbots, but it doesn't matter, because ogres are a strong riot unit, and just strong. Ogres don't care. Nyardalok surrounding on all sides. These Nesni doesn't have a whole lot left to work with and honestly isn't building enough to use all their metal. Even does have boys coming in here and those are gonna try. They really are. They're not gonna accomplish much but they're gonna try. Actually they might be able to do some stuff against this ogre. The Kodachis, on the other hand, I don't... I don't think so. Yeah, those Kodachis aren't even going to get close. So, with that, I'm not sure where Yuznetsny expects to go with this, other than... I guess Mass Duck? Looks like Duck Boy. I can see the idea, I can see the strategy. I mean, Yuznetsny, according to the writings, is a bit more experienced and a little bit higher ranked than Yardalok, which tells me that Yuznetsny probably has a fair bit in terms of experience with later game play, like once the economy starts to get going. Now, granted, Yuznetsny is not getting their economy going very quickly. It's constantly getting harassed. But, Yardalok is getting ahead. And one of the things, if you're dealing with a player who's not super experienced with mid to late game play, they can start to get a little overwhelmed when you start getting, you know, 20, 30, 40 metal. We are seeing as Nesni managed to get the caretakers, or, sorry, near to lock the caretakers up, so they shouldn't be accessing. What I'm worried about as far as near to lock is going is what are they going to do when they get to like 30 or 40 and start looking at possible other factories or possibly just massing up things like minotaurs. And where did they decide to go with that? But it looks like they have that relatively well planned out. And also controlling the space as well, but... Nyardalok seems okay. Is Nitsni having, again, trouble maintaining their armies? Although the boys are doing better than I predicted. I was wrong. The boys are actually doing a fine job. Okay, well, Flying Fin saying the Disco Lotus is being used just because why not? more entertaining than not doing that. It's their, their hypothesis. Okay, cool. Thanks. And yes, this is... I'm not sure if it's a new map, but it's definitely a map we haven't seen before. Or it's a map I haven't seen before. I think it's fairly new. Usually if I haven't seen a map, it's new. Like, I try to cast a relatively large variety of maps, and this one I have not seen before. I don't know if it's a matchmaker pool now. I don't think it is. And a lot of times tournament tournaments like this will use unfamiliar maps. Especially ones that aren't in the matchmaker pool necessarily. Aquanim likes doing that in order to experiment with a larger variety of maps. And I do respect that. It does mean that I don't necessarily know all the maps offhand when I see them though. But Nyardalok has been taking full advantage of that. I mean, the players did a pretty good job analyzing the map to begin with. Nyardalok, I think, was quite smart when it came to realizing they could play tanks. Like, the middle of the map wasn't that steep. They didn't have to worry about the tanks not getting through the water. 
The overall map is fairly flat, so tanks can work perfectly, and there's enough metal around quickly enough that it's viable. I mean, granted, that's the one thing I would have gone rovers personally if I was going to go for vehicles. Actually, probably would have. I uh, might have gone amp. I don't know if I would have gone amp on this. Probably would have gone hover, honestly. Hover or rovers. I don't know that I would have gone tank personally. But Nyardalog has been making it work reasonably well. It remains to be seen how well that'll continue to work. Unfortunately, Nyardalog is starting to run a little short on energy. They have been building a few solar collectors here and there. It's not quite enough yet, though. In fact, I'm not sure why Nyardalog is having a hard time actually maintaining their economy, but it may not matter. As it is, Minotaur is coming in and being heavily harassed by ducks and boys. Unfortunately, not able to get rid of that factory, so Nyardalok's still stuck just trying to crest that hill, and that's the one thing that tanks are having the trouble. It's just getting up this hill. It's red, so they can get up it. It's not purple. It's just a slow-going affair. It makes it an uphill battle. Now, granted, once you get uphill, it's different, but Kodachis are countered by boys. And just the sheer number of units. It's just Nyardalok cannot get a large enough army all at once. And honestly, they're donating metal to Yaz Netsni. Okay, Harvian, that's that's pretty good. Harvian, you could almost say the boys are back in town. Well played. Oh, apparently this is one of Aquim's maps. Oh, so that's what it is. Aquanim's using the tournament to promote their own maps. Oh, well, how petty. Seriously, though, it's actually a pretty cool map. And this is a good time to test it. Why not? I mean, it's competitive time. People are playing to win. If you want to test a map, yeah, throw it in a tournament. See what happens. See how people play it out. At this point, it's being played out kind of awkwardly. I mean, Nyardalok has control over the majority of the map. They just don't have anything to really push it into a win. Going for the Cyclops, because why not? I wish they would get a few more wind generators. They're not wind generators. Actually, I'm curious about the wind generators. Power. No. Solar generators. Even the highest ground. Wow. Wind generators are not good here. Point four is the best you can get. Okay. Good to know. I mean, maybe you can get point five somewhere. Nope, point three, point four, point three. Yeah, nope. Best is point point four. That's not great. So yeah, solars. Wish Nyard like would get more solars. Or reclaim trees, apparently. Whatever. More power. Ah, good. That's exactly what they're doing. Perfect. Nyardalock is indeed getting more power. That's going to be handy, because Yuznesny has been stockpiling units for the last two minutes. They are reasonably strong. Get through the welders, no problem. Get through some of these metal extractors as well. Start to take some revenge, though Nyardalok might realize that the main base is open and decide to push instead. Considering they have that Cyclops there, the Minotaurs, it's going to be interesting. The commander's dead, for sure. Although Yuznesny is building up a wall, and that may not be in time! Wait, is that a wall or a ramp? Looks like it was supposed to be a wall. Did not get built up in time. And instead, Nyardalok able to completely wreck everything here. That Cyclops two shot on the commander. Nyardalok, on the other hand, is not worried at all for their own commander. Stunning out all the ducks. And that is... It. Really, I'm curious, what was this supposed to be? Hmm. I'm curious what the plan was. Is that supposed to be a wall or is it supposed to be a ramp? Because it looks like it's supposed to be a wall. But it's so little of it was completed, it's hard to tell. Maybe it was supposed to be a ramp. Make it that much easier to go down. It's not going to matter, though. So one way or the other, there's... Well, okay, the fusion reactor is dead. Which hurts these nesting power a lot. And now the Ambot factory is dead. And then this should be game. I mean, these nesting has been in the back foot for the entirety of the game. This is just putting the final nail in the coffin. Oh, yeah, Kingstead. Yeah, it was Catwalk, wasn't it? Yeah, Kingstead 
apparently made a map called Catwalk that was stuck in the spring files. Is the the way things get uploaded, they get uploaded a site called Spring Files, and then it gets distributed across all the servers, including the 0K server. But sometimes that process can be delayed, and unfortunately that happened to Catwalk. So we played Ravage for round three instead, which would have been cool because I do like the fact that these maps are newer. Because like I said, it's a good testing ground for them. And, and also, I mean, in terms of, I guess, competitive stuff, eh, eh, whatever you want. And you can look at it either as you're testing how players adapt to new maps, which is a thing. But then you also aren't testing how players handle maps that they're familiar with and have practiced. Okay, so Randing Shatter is one of the map games that looked like it was going to be good. The other one was Google Frog and... That's also done too. Okay, never mind. Man of Google Frog also ended quickly. So all the maps seem to have matches seem to have ended fairly quickly for round four. Huh. Well, I guess we can check out Exist versus Nope, that also ended. Okay, yeah, so we're done round four, so we're just gonna be waiting on round five. As we get to what may very well be a non tiebreak situation. I'm actually kind of curious. Let's double check the standings. Randy and Manu are currently tied for top, so they're going to be fighting each other next round. Uh, I want to check out Makesh Batra and stuff. Presumably they'll be playing each other, but Randy versus Manu 12 looks like that's going to be the finals before the finals. Currently, both are undefeated in this tournament. And then Kachacha and Dyingfriend are also going to be fighting each other for. Third for what might end up being third. So depending on how this goes, we might not have a tiebreaker. Because if Randy Manu, someone's gonna win out of that. And then you have Kshatra and Dimefreund. And someone's gonna win out of that. Now I'm assuming it's not gonna be a tie, but let's assume it's not a tie, it's gonna be a win. So Kshatra and Dimefreund, someone wins, there's four one and three two, and then Manu twelve and Randy, there's four one and five oh. Which means whoever loses Randy and Mana 12 and whoever wins Kshatri and Dimefront are going to go at it in round 6. And if whoever wins Randy and Mana 12... I know, it's getting confusing. Whoever went 5-0 goes 6-0. And whoever lost... I don't know. Whoever, if whoever goes 5-0 goes 6-0. If someone's undefeated this tournament, there won't be a tiebreaker. So we could actually be looking at no tiebreakers. I know it's a very confusing thing to say, but yeah, if someone, whoever wins Manu 12 versus Randy, if they win their next match, then the first three places are set, and there's no need for a tiebreaker. Otherwise, it would be 5-1, 5-1, 1 and be a three-way tiebreaker. Oh, wait, really? No, 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 because it'd be 5-0... Oh, yeah, it would be, actually. Yeah, it would be 5-1. Five, one. Two five ones. No, it'd be 5-1-4-2. Never mind. 5-1-5-1-4-2. Five, one, five, one, That's what would happen. As opposed to 6 0 5 one, four, two. Anyway. Mathing that out is a thing. So, let's just wait for round five. Stay tuned. We'll be back with that. And then round six after that. <laughs> 